Kenya is growing. And with over one million babies being born every year, the population's needs are growing too. Villages are becoming towns, towns are becoming cities, and the contest for space is becoming cutthroat. Land is being acquired at a neckbreak speed. Kenya has some of the highest prices of land in Africa. This is a very prime property. But the appetite for land has turned against some of the country's poorest children. It is an act of injustice of the highest order. 158 of those schools are land grabbed by unscrupulous people. This land belongs to us. It doesn't belong to, it belongs to them. My name is Tony Karemi. I'm a businessman here in town. I sell property. Land prices here are going up by... Yeah, they are going about 30%. Okay, some are going even 100%. What? But you see, guys are really exaggerating on that. Naka sells itself. By that I mean, as you look around, there is a view of the lake from that distance. How much would that be worth? That would be worth a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> It's not hard to see why real estate dealers like Tony Karimi would be interested in land like this. If you were selling this land, yes. how quickly could it go? This is a very prime property. It will take me a very short time to sell this property. But in the way of the beautiful vistas is something of an eyesore. A clump of corrugated iron structures squatting on this real estate treasure. Naka Primary School. It's almost unbelievable that a school like this would sit in a place like this. But the irony of what people see in this land is tragic. I would like to see fields uh, down this way uh -huh. and at least up there for classrooms. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any mm. reason why the classrooms are up there? Um, I always see people saying down the field. <laughs> 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 That's a good enough I, I, I don't know why it is always down the field. 58-year-old mm. Francis Mwangi's vision of this land is just as heartwarming as any real estate dealers. Although, where they see houses... What I see in this yeah. piece of land is just a, a modern school. He's the headmaster of Naka Primary School. A primary school that sits on a dream, but has been living through a nightmare. You have seen, we are, we are operating on a, on a 0 0.7 acre. 0 0.7, not even one acre, less than an acre. And that is where we are to play, we are, we are, we are to learn, and all this. And even the learning atmosphere in those classes, some of them are quite dark. While the 10-acre piece of land lies empty, the product of years of transactions based on fraud that thousands of land transactions in Kenya have been poisoned by. And a trail of records from the Ministry of Lands gives a clear route back to the day the rain started beating in Naka Primary. This was an agricultural farm belonging to a mzungu called the Jeki. According to the Planning Act, land above a certain acreage, when being subdivided as a compulsory matter, needed to have parcels set aside as public utility land for use by schools and hospitals. The Nakuru Housing Society one of the land-buying companies of the 1980s bought this land, 
With this legal requirement well in mind, Naka Primary was born out of this law. According to this record of leases from the Ministry of Lands, it originally was called Soimoro Primary School. These directors that were now the, for, the, for, the, for, for the Naka Land Buying Company are the ones that took the title for Saimoro Primary School as trustees. On the 12th of March 1993, the first record of the school's land's existence was made. The names of a Joshua Kipto Toroitich, Harum Chalanga Ruto, and a Stephen Kibowen were registered as the trustees of Soimoro Primary School. Then, five years later, and for no apparent reason, this public utility land now belonged to someone else. The land was now registered as belonging to a company called Hyrax Developers. The next alleged owner, called the Pyrethrum Board of Kenya, was registered one month and three days later in the Green Book. A copy of the sale agreement that transferred the land from Hyrax to Pyrethrum Board showed a most worrying fact. The land was registered in the name of Hyrax Developers on the 21st of October 1998, but the sale agreement shows that the land was sold to the Pyrethrum Board one day later on the 22nd of October 1998. We have uh, Saimoro Primary School with a title, a public primary school that was the, whose, whose title was transferred to a private developer or a private developer, uh, development company who sold the land the following day. They get the title today, they sell it tomorrow. We go on with the case. The hope of Francis and the Naka community was that the court would save them. After all, they had the law behind them. The case would be heard by Justice Luca Kimaru and would drag on for 10 years. In the time being, the school got poorer and poorer. Stuck in court, it couldn't receive government support. Then, on the 16th of January 2008, Francis and those supporting the school's claims would get that ruling. Justice Luca Kimaru acknowledged what was at the heart of the school and the municipality of Nakuru's suit, saying, and quote, According to the evidence adduced by both the plaintiff and the defendant, it is evident that the land was originally set aside as public utility land for the purposes of setting up a public primary school. Then, Justice Kimaru's ruling took a questionable turn when he stated as follows. Although it is apparent that the said Hyrax Developers Limited manipulated the land allocation system so as to have the land allocated to it, there is nothing this court can do in the absence of the Commissioner of Lands being enjoined in the suit." End quote. The school would lose the case on what appeared to be a technical knockout. Kimaru ruled that because the Commissioner of Lands, who approved the change of the land from public to private use, wasn't enjoined by the defense, the court's hands were tied. That wasn't true. We looked into the proceedings of the case and found evidence that the defense had indeed applied to have the Commissioner of Lands enjoined, but that Kimaru himself declined the application, effectively short-circuiting the defense's case in spite of the fact that the transfer was clearly illegal. There is that judgment which is quite suspect because I don't know whether Justice Kimaru could have been uh, not, or, uh, not, uh, not aware that uh, public utility land cannot be allocated to an individual. The case would go to appeal. Then, yet more curious things took place. The Municipal Council, which had fought on behalf of the school for a decade, decided to withdraw its case against the Pyrethrum Board. Even more disturbing was that the Pyrethrum Board was able to sell the property while the case was still in court. They sold it to Ensa Limited. 
we sought comment from the proprietors of Ensa Limited, who referred us to their lawyer, Gordon Ogola. We had looked at the documentation and we had even looked at the appeal. And I had advised my clients on the probability of success of that appeal. Yeah. But still, is it a regular thing for someone to purchase land when there is an appeal lodged in court? It happens every day. That doesn't mean that it's right. It is right because, like, uh, as, a, as a lawyer, we look at the documentation, eh? and then with concurrence of my client, I will advise them on the probability of the, the outcome of that case. Ogola's advice to his clients to buy a property that was being contested in court would seem dangerous. But one interesting fact about the transaction slipped past many people. Among the members of the committee of the Nakuru Municipal Council that withdrew its case against Pi Board was former mayor of Nakuru, Mohamed Isak Surao. One of the directors of Ensa Limited is Ibrahim Isak Surao. They must be uh, stepbrothers. So you don't see any conflict of interest at all? Completely there's none. How about in the fact that the that Ensa Limited mm -hmm. bought the land months before, at least months before, the, the appeal was withdrawn. That is after they purchased, after they paid the initial val value. Of course, the judgment had been in favor of them. Whatever happened, how the appeal was withdrawn, I did not inquire into it. Now, sitting on the edge of a piece of land that had changed hands three times, Naka Primary had one last shot, the National Lands Commission. They appealed to the NLC, and on the 8th of October 2015, the National Lands Commission wrote back to them, revoking Ensa's title and giving the land back to the school. They had won, or so they thought. A few months later, the same commission would cancel its earlier revocation. Ensa's owners moved quickly to wall off the land, but this moved things into a whole new territory. The president and the minister doesn't help us to get this land back. This school stands to be dissolved. Hawa watu ya radi, juu na pindua imambo, na waki pindua imambo inarudi na kuwa, uliwa na kuwa na chaito, na chaito hii ya kutoa. Human rights activists, the local area MP, and members of the community would bring down the wall with force. Back in Nairobi, we went to ask the National Lands Commission why they had reversed their own decision. Hyrax developers were lawfully allocated the parcel. Mm. Okay, the court said that. Did the uh, Pi Board buy the land from Hyrax? Uh, Pi Board, no, no, no. Pi Board were allocated this land. It is Hyrax who bought. Hyrax Company Limited was allocated the land in Naka by the Commission of Lands. I asked Swazuri whether he had seen documents showing that the land was indeed zoned for use as a public school. Aside from the ruling, yeah. did uh, the National Lands Commission look at the evidence that was evidence? The evidence. Well, we, yeah, the, 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 the legal department must have looked at this before they wrote uh, a report on the court like this one. They must have looked at the, the evidence that was adduced. Then how did they miss this? I don't know how, how they missed that because um, I, I may not have been in that uh, committee, but all I know is that they, they relied on the court ruling. The National Lands Commission seemed to have missed a document that we were able to get simply by looking at the evidence that the land on which Naka Primary sits is public land. Public utility land. Once it is determined to be public, it can only change to private if the public authority says it has no longer use for that property. It must be confirmed 
that we don't need a school there, or we don't need a dispensary there. And you know those are very rare. The school's fate is still uncertain. Five of the activists who helped tear down the wall are now facing charges of destruction of property. They're not the only ones running against the law in a fight to save the future of children. This is a golden triangle where some of Kenya's most important infrastructure projects to date intersect. The Kenya Pipelines Project, the Dongokundu Bypass and the Standard Gauge Railway which passes right behind me. But in moving the earth to prepare for these projects, the earth movers also created sheer cliffs of the land on which people's homes, the people who resided here, sat. And one of the communities that had been affected is Wamdudu Primary School. The infrastructure projects have taken a huge bite out of Muamdudu's landscape. But every morning, by standing at the ledge of this hollowed out earth, you see tiny pink dots inching their way along this site's gravelly floor. From every direction, the dots grow into little figures. School children, on their way for their first classes of the day at Muamdudu Primary School. They slip and slide, their little footsteps making it past beams that will carry trains in the near future. And they climb and climb. Then they rest before getting to school. A school that they may not have for much longer. I arrived here in 2006 as a headmaster. I just took two years, then I retired. I left here uh, uh, November 2008. Stephen Binu is the school's former headmaster and a resident here since he was born 64 years ago. The land that the school sits on was part of the pieces of land that had titles belonging to absentee landlords having been parceled out to subjects of the Sultan of Zanzibar in the 1900s. Those are very old allocations in that area, the entire area of Mamdudu, the, as you are going to Mazeras, that area of Miritini, that area of uh, Changamwe. These are very old uh, titles. In this humble place, thousands of students from Kwale County have schooled here over the years. In 2007, the government of former President Mwai Kibaki declared that absentee lands, a hallmark of many pieces of land at the coast, would be reclaimed by the government and put up for sale. Given how long Wamdudu Primary had been on the land, its board of management wrote to the government, applying for a title under adverse possession. As they waited... We found the Colfax being interested in this land in... Uh, 20, sorry, 2008. How did you find what did they communicate? What did they do? They didn't, in fact, inform us, but they used the, the, the provincial administration, that's chief and DO and DC, to come and uh, tell us that you come and vacate uh, uh, this land. It is, not your, it is not your land. We have gone for a personal research and saw that uh, this. Uh, uh, Colfax has obtained the land, though we are not in professionals to, to prove that it was uh, corrupt or genuine. The piece of land is registered to Chunky Limited, a company associated with Colfax Limited. Both are owned by Mombasa-based businessman Harji Gorvand Ruda, nicknamed Harish. Colfax deals in industrial products and developments. It is believed that Colfax wants the land in order to set up infrastructure that could benefit from the land's closeness to the standard gauge railway line. 
It is unclear to Mbinu how Haji was able to claim the land, but he's not the only one in the dark. I met with an officer working in the Kwale County Land Management Board. He declined to be interviewed for this report, but intimated that they knew that the land was registered to Chunky Limited, but weren't sure how that happened. He claimed that influence from a local politician had seen to it that Chunky got the land ahead of Muamdudu. We were unable to verify these claims. But even as there was confusion over the true ownership of the land, Colfax began excavating land beneath the school and on surrounding properties. Uh. Uh. Mbinu takes us to meet his cousin, Daniel Jira. Like Mbinu, he has lived on this land all his life. It wasn't until 2008 when Colfax started making claims on the land that things began to change. Mm. Colfax then began excavating the land under their home, making desolate islands above sheer cliffs where their animals used to graze. Now, even for his goats, going to graze is a dangerous affair. Protests by the residents here wound up in violence and worse. Out of the clear blue sky, the police were told that amongst these people were members of the Al-Shabaab. The alleged Al-Shabaab fighters here will surprise you. Mm, uh, yeah. <laughs> at, at, at 64? I'm one of them, Al-Shabaab. I'm Al Shabab now. Okay. Mm. How did you get this? <laughs> In fact, I'm, I'm wondering how I'm called Al Shabab. If I'm called, I'm called a teacher, there you are. Eh? But uh, I was branded this, 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 this cr criminal charge because uh, I'm the only secretary of this land, uh, land uh, Mamdud Land Committee. With charges of belonging to a terrorist organization on their heads and the school's land literally being taken out from under them, the people of Muamdudu and the school that has served so many aren't assured of a future here. Yeah, this is my right. And in fact, I have no, 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 no place to go. I don't have any place to go. That's why I'm fighting for the school, for, for the school and myself. And the, the rest of our, our, the rest of my community, because we have no other place to go. Sawa, eh? Aye. Sawa. What have you been? What have you experienced? We've just been talking about the experience here of um, what it was like before Colfax started digging over here, and and how they were able to take their cattle, you know, on flat land. And those inconveniences aside, I think it's the sheer arrogance of some of the people who've, uh, who are allegedly constructing here and not being able to talk to the people, explain why they need to move, or even just give them an explanation about why it is they're even here. Such is a life and such is a lot of the poor man, it would seem, with every infrastructure project. The belief here is that the National Lands Commission is reviewing the ownership dispute. Back at Ardi House, it appears that the decision has already been made. There are 11 schools between 
Mombasa and Nairobi in the, and, uh, affected by the standard gauge railway line. The agreement with, between CRBC and Kenya Railways is that any school that has been touched, we shall buy a parcel of land elsewhere nearby to put up our new modern schools there. And there are 11 of them. I think Mamdudu should be one of them. The chairman's assertion is strange because Kenya Railways has not asked for the land on which Mwamdudu sits and there is ample space between where the railway line will pass and where the school is. We sought comment from Colfax proprietor, Harji. Was that? The owner of Colfax just spoke to us um, saying that the matter of Mwamdudu Primary School is in court and therefore he cannot comment, which is his right to say so. But it's very interesting that he would choose that line considering that it wasn't even him who went to court. So he's hoping that the courts will hear him out and perhaps the facts will as well. But what remains to be seen is whether the children of Mwamdudu Primary School and indeed that community over there will get some sort of resolution to this in days to come. The closing school next term there might not be a school to come back to. An uncertain future is especially difficult to come to terms with if you're a child. And in both Mwamdudu and Naka, it is the children who have had to speak out to draw national attention to the disputes there. The protests specifically in Naka were held in bad taste by some government officials because of the involvement of children in the fight for their land. Fighting perceived injustice in schools, especially with regard to land grabbing, has been something that's been left to parents traditionally and adults. But as was the example with Langata Primary School and is the example here in Nakuru, that children are getting involved as well. I'm here to speak to two of them. My name is Lekolol Pende. Lekolol Pende. Mm. What class are you? Class 8. How old are you? 14. My name is John Caberera and I'm in class 6. I'll tell the president that you should look into this issue and this problem because I know it's not only our school, see it's also affecting the whole country land grabbing this issue. People should be issued with their right title deeds and if something belongs to you it should be yours. You know your sipwa? This land belongs to us, it doesn't belong to we belong to them. What lesson is that teaching the children here? That even their school can be taken. What lesson are you learning from that? That even your school can be taken. That life is unfair. <laughs> A time may very well come in Kenya when the perception that justice is reserved for the rich, especially around land rights, and that may lead to cynicism that the courts actually work when land reform, as proposed in the Constitution, has a reserve price that only the rich can pay. So if it was proved that NACA initially was public utility land, what would your advice to your clients be? Get your money back and sue the government for damages. It isn't so simple for the children of NACA of Mwamdudu, or of the 158 schools nationally that have had their land grabbed according to the National Lands Commission. Justice hasn't worked for them so far. And if they are to believe in a future in which they can claim a piece of Kenya, then the peace that they claim now must be safe for them to call their own. When you're bright, you're active, so... <laughs>